Good morning, everyone. Welcome to CSIS. I'm Michael Green, the Senior Vice President for Asia here, and it's my uh, great privilege to introduce um, our distinguished speaker and to welcome some, some good friends uh, uh, from both Taipei and Washington here today, Ray Burkhardt and Richard Bush and others who've played a big role in our relationship. <coughs> um, we are delighted that uh, Taiwan, the ROC, uh, Minister of Economic Affairs, my friend John Chen Chung Dung is here to give us a strategic and policy explanation of economic policy thinking and trade policy thinking in Taipei and also how to move forward um, with the U.S. and with regional and global economic affairs. We'll invite uh, uh, Minister Dung to uh, give opening comments and then my colleagues um, here at CSIS uh, we'll uh, interview him before opening up to questions from all of you. Um, the, inter the interrogators <laughs> uh, for Minister Dung will be um, Scott Miller, who is our um, senior advisor and the William M. Scold Chair in International Business at CSIS. If you've heard this, Scott, he is encyclopedic on TPP, TTIP, WTO. Uh, and um, uh, Scott Kennedy, uh, our Deputy Director of the Freeman Chair in China, studies and the director of our new project on Chinese business and political economy. Um, and um, we will then open up to all of you. Um, our bilateral trade um, with uh, Taiwan is uh, at $67 billion. It's important, uh, but it's important beyond those numbers uh, because it's uh, in U.S. interests and in Asia's interests uh, for, for Taiwan uh, to be increasingly integrated in um, the emerging trade and financial architecture, not only in Asia with things like TPP, but globally um, as uh, TPP, TTIP, and other things move forward and start uh, hopefully um, kick-starting uh, a new round of global liberalization. And, and Taiwan ought to be right at the center of that and leading it, uh, but has a lot of work to do too uh, to get to that place. Um, so we look forward to hearing from Minister Dung about thinking and planning in Taipei about this, and then turning it over to our colleagues to ask him some questions, and then we'll open it up to you before we conclude. So, John, welcome, and thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, Scott, Scott, <laughs> uh, Richard, uh, Ray, uh, friends. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I, first, I want to thank CSIS for uh, arranging this opportunity for me to come over here. And uh, of course, I can see many uh, familiar faces here. I feel uh, very much at home. Uh, I left in 2007 here in the, uh, as the uh, deputy representative in the TECRO. I, I can tell you I miss Washington, D.C. very much. Uh, and uh, everything is so familiar. Everything uh, comes back very quickly. Uh, but uh, it is not as cold as I expected. <laughs> I brought with me all the heavy equipments. But uh, there's no need to use it uh, in these two days. Uh, I, uh, I'm in my job uh, for two, this current position uh, for two months. Uh, so I'm quite new. But uh, I think Washington. Uh, DC is an important uh, place that I should visit. And I have so many friends, I have so many business I need to discuss with. So uh, this is the first uh, foreign uh, trips uh, since I took over uh, this new job. Uh, I, uh, uh, today, I would like to uh, talk about Taiwan's economic prospects as well as some challenges, opportunities, and to offer my observations uh, on how our two countries can work together to enhance uh, this relationship. Uh, first of all, uh, I think, uh, let me uh, tell you my feeling as the minister of uh, this, this ministry. Uh, this ministry has played a very crucial part uh, in Taiwan's economic Develop process. Uh, we have so many uh, admirable and memorable ministers uh, before me. And uh, no wonder that the general public, the society, has very high expectation uh, to this 
uh, to this uh, to the ministry and uh, to the uh, uh, to myself. Uh, I uh, only two months. Uh, I can feel that the stress that uh, I have. This is a daily stress. Uh, I didn't really uh, uh, expect the stress so high when I accepted the offer. But uh, uh, now you are, you are here, you, you do your best. Uh, very quickly, uh, to uh, give you a uh, picture of how, what uh, we are doing uh, in the ministry. Uh, of course, uh, we are responsible for international relations and international trade. We conduct trade negotiations, we do trade promotions, and we enhance, we try to enhance the economic relation with all of our uh, partners. And uh, we also take care of industrial uh, development. Uh, ministry help the uh, companies, business community to do research and development and uh, to develop and maintain industrial zones. There are uh, 100, about 150 industrial zones uh, in Taiwan. It, we call it industrial park uh, in Taiwan, uh, where the ministry uh, is responsible uh, to take care of them, to take care of the companies uh, there. Uh, for instance, if any of the industrial park has uh, pollution, we have to take care of that. Uh, in other words, uh, my colleagues were in, in a very difficult position to be, uh, to be blamed uh, by the neighbors there for the pollution of the companies uh, that, uh, for, for the, the, the companies that uh, uh, they met that pollution. So, very challenging. We get, you get alerted every day. Uh, you don't want your phone ring in the middle of the night because that means something happened. Uh, and uh, we also develop programs to connect schools and business. Uh, this is one of the biggest issues that we have. The school education cannot connect with the business need. So that's another thing we have to, to do. And of course, we, uh, uh, we try to attract uh, foreign investment and uh, we assist uh, Taiwanese company to invest in abroad. Uh, then uh, we also cover small medium industry. Uh, you probably know that 80%, more than 80% of our GN GDP were contributed by the small medium industries in Taiwan. And 90, over 98% of, in terms of number of the companies are small medium enterprises. So all of our economic uh, growth, uh, performance, mainly, mainly, majority of them were the work due to the work of small medium uh, enterprise. So we have to take good care of them. Uh, we do energy policy. Uh, the biggest debate in Taipei now, in Taiwan, now is nuclear power. Shall we continue to use nuclear power or not? Uh, this is, a, this is a very uh, emotional issue there. Uh, so, again, we have to deal with uh, the issues. Uh, the uh, last but not least, we have to make sure that uh, the country has enough power supply, electricity, enough water supply, enough gasoline supply, You'll be surprised, but that's our job. Uh, if there's any shortage of electricity, uh, you can be sure that uh, I'll receive the first telephone call that uh, we have problem there. Uh, we now have a shortage of water. Uh, so you will say, what's the, what's the matter with you? Wh why, why that you have to, if there's no rain, no rain, who can uh, help this? But, uh, uh, the current situation in Taiwan is the, uh, the rain was the, the rainfall is the lowest in 50 years. And uh, we didn't expect, we, the weatherman told us, the forecast, 
that uh, uh, in next uh, two, three, four months, uh, things won't change that much. In other words, we'll continue to have a shortage of rainfall. Mm -hmm. So and I, again, that's, that's the area we have to take care of. Now, <laughs> uh, let's very quickly on uh, ministry's job. Uh, uh, please uh, uh, give me a call uh, when you come to visit Taipei. Uh, I will show you around uh, where our facilities, we, we have electricity, we have power plants everywhere. We have uh, water uh, where every, everywhere. So I will show you uh, around uh, Taiwan. Now, uh, let's go back, uh, let's uh, go to uh, Taiwan's economic pros prospects. Uh, our economic performance in uh, 2014 was better than expected. Uh, the growth rate in 2014 is 3.5%. Uh, uh, also from the report of Zhonghua Institution for Economic Research, the uh, purchasing managers uh, index has increased for two consecutive months, implying that the business communities are optimistic uh, about the future. Uh, and then uh, we will have a modest expansion in Taiwan uh, in uh, this year. Uh, looking ahead of 2015, uh, we, think, uh, we thank the unwavering pace of recovery in the United States and uh, the uh, monetary uh, policy implemented by some major countries. Uh, we see uh, some economic indicators uh, of our exports, our foreign orders, our industrial production, our shipments, uh, etc., all show a healthy trend. Uh, so according to the latest statistics, uh, Taiwan's economic economy is expected to maintain a modest growth this year. Uh, the growth rate will be in the range of 3.5%. Uh, 22 uh, or 3.5. Of course, as minister, you hope you can do better than this 3.8. We might have the chance. Uh, we might have the chance uh, to do better. So, uh, with the uh, mountain smart uh, phone, uh, smartphone innovations, online retail sales. Uh, could see a lasting boost from the advance, advancement of four generation 4G mobile communication network. Uh, however, that's the positive sign. However, the slowdown of economic growth in mainland China, uh, that is 7.4 in 2014, and then in 2015 will be 6.8, uh, according to IMF estimation. And other factors will affect Taiwan's export somewhat. So it is estimated that Taiwan's export will grow uh, by probably 3.2. It's not very impressive, it's, it's, but it's, it's okay. It, uh, we hope we can do better on our exports. Moreover, the uh, low global oil price could save on production cost for importing countries, oil importing countries like Taiwan. So. Uh, through this fall of uh, crude oil price uh, contribute uh, to lower production cost and stores uh, inflation. Uh, but uh, we also need to watch the oil price closely and cope with any change uh, required. Now, uh, let's move to Taiwan's challenges. Uh, first, our first challenge is our industry need to modernize and transform. Uh, since 1980, Taiwan has focused on production of electronics, information, technology, and communication sectors, which made Taiwan an exporting powerhouse. However, today we see the practice of <coughs> curtailing and suppressing cost to the bare minimum. Uh, this has clear, this kind of practice has its limitation. Uh, to continue our economic pro progress, Taiwan must come to terms with several key realities. One, we must take steps to develop stronger exports in our service industry. 
uh, almost 70% of our GDP is in service sector, while exports and investment continue to concentrate uh, currently in uh, manufacturing sector. Uh, to combine, in the future, to combine our manufacturing capability, service should be a key area for our export uh, to go forward. Second, we must increase the amount of value added uh, products uh, to uh, value added products. The domestic industry too often focus only on activities with low value added aspects, such as manufacturing components and uh, OEM. We need to improve that. Thirdly, domestic research and development expenditures on industrial sector should increase. Our research and develop investment in private sectors are inadequate, and uh, more government budgets are required to put in this area. Fourthly, we are in need of brand recognition for our products. We have some, Acer, we have some giant, we have some good brand uh, name products, but uh, three, four is not enough. We need more. Uh, another thing we have is this low uh, FDI stock. In comparison with neighboring Asia countries, Taiwan has had luck, uh, lackluster performance in attracting foreign investment. Uh, according to the research by Brookings uh, Institution, the level of FDI attracted to Taiwan between 2006 and 2012 remained almost unchanged at 50 billion US dollars. For the same period, Malaysia and South Korea each had over US dollar 100 billion in FDI, uh, while Japan has close to US dollar 200 billion in FDI. Uh, the uh, National Development Council of the government recently surveyed business in Taiwan from Europe, the US, and Japan to ask them about our business climate. There are three major recommendations emerged. First, Taiwan's regulatory regime needs to be more internationalized, coherent, and transparent. Uh, as the MCHEM 2015 Business Climate Survey suggests, the uh, majority of business leaders consider that inconsistent regulatory interpretation, excessive bureaucracy, and outdated laws and regulations are the obstacles to do business. Uh, we must take steps to harmonize our regulatory regime with international standards. Second, policy communication should be strengthened. Coordination within government and between government to industry, and most important, between government and society should be enhanced. Uh, we, uh, I don't know uh, whether you know this, that uh, all the cabinet members were asked to attend a class in the weekend, two weeks ago, uh, to learn how to communicate. Uh, <laughs> look, I mean, the youngest of us, it's about 50 years old. We have to learn these uh, uh, internet things. Uh, but uh, we, we need to do it. Uh, there's no other choice. Last, we must accelerate efforts to integrate more closely with major trading partners in East Asia, uh, as well as internationally, to increase our market reach. Uh, definitely, we need a new market. Uh, since the second uh, in the 50s, uh, Taiwan has adopted export promotion and import substitution policies uh, because there's no natural resources. However, we have long depended on development of the electronic industry, whose export to total export, the export of that sector to total export grew from 30% in 1968 to 60% now cause and unbalance in the economic structure. Though the trade value uh, stands approximately between 
uh, five, 570 billion to uh, US dollar six billion per annum since 2011. Our major trading partners are still the United States, mainly China and Japan. We need to find more markets for our products. Uh, we have seen in recent years the proliferation of bilateral FTAs or proletal regional uh, trade arrangement because the, uh, uh, as the multilateral liberalization under WTO, Doha Round, came to a standstill. Uh, according to uh, WTO statistics, there are about 400 uh, free trade are in effect around the world uh, as of January of 2015. The level of the liberalization in some of these bilateral and regional FTAs has reached an impressively high standard. For example, uh, I would like to uh, report to you that in both of the agreement between Taiwan and Singapore and the agreement between Taiwan and New Zealand on, our, on these FTAs, the coverage of trade in goods with zero tariff is more than 99%. Both agreements include chapters such as competition, environment, field, field pictures, uh, television, cooperation, co no, uh, television co-productions and cover new emerging issues such as indigenous cooperation. Uh, so our, our FTA are very high standards, uh, which covers new, new issues. Maybe the other FTA uh, has not covered yet. This is our agreement with New Zealand and our agreement with Singapore. The uh, conclusion of free trade agreement can create trade opportunities for countries aggressively seeking bilateral or regional integration. However, for countries having no very clear chance to participate uh, in this process, uh, our trade opportunities will disappear or to be drastically reduced we face just such a prospect as long as it is not part of the growing network of trade integration <coughs> agreements taking shape today. Those are the challenges we have. Now, coming to the opportunities. Uh, the green economy and sustainable development, we have opportunities there. In the future, industry development will include the information technology industry with the integration of computers, communications, and consumer electron electronics. Under pressures from the deterioration of the eco-environment and earth resources, most advanced countries are engaging in developing green manufacturing and consumptions with concept of sustainable development. Uh, in fact, green trade is now a global trend. The United Nations is urging countries to promote green economies and public green procurement. The APEC members have reached consensus on the market liberalization of environmental goods. The WTO is launching negotiation on trade in environmental goods. Every major FTA includes an environmental, environment chapter. Uh, major companies are also setting up a standard operation procedure for green procurement. In our case, we see exports of green products such as traditional environmental pollution control equipment, energy saving water equipment, green materials, low carbon vehicles, carbon capture and seal equipment are all growing. This shows that green products possess significant, significant potential. Uh, Secondly, uh, we think there are business opportunities in smart and digital lifestyle. In an area driven by computer demand, the ultimate goal of technological, uh, technical development is to ensure that consumers are able to maximize convenience and efficiencies. 
through the use of a new information technology to create a fully digitalized lifestyle. The concept of digital uh, lifestyle was thus born. Taiwan's IC, uh, ICT industry has a strong foundation. Uh, it may create new possibilities for our economy and to help Taiwan realize its global potential. The concept of the digital lifestyle can be applied to both of the urban and rural and solve the issue of sustainable development of mankind. For instance, on the medical care, traffic, G GPS, car information service, the digital lifestyle is already more than just a concept. Uh, several noticeable examples can be seen in the field of intellect, intelligent traffic, uh, such as this freeway electronic toll collection system. I was told that uh, we implement, this is the first system in the world that you collect toll according to the mileage you travel. Uh, so we have that. It is very convenient. You drive in Taipei, they deduct this on the prepaid card. Uh, uh, fair, very fair. Nobody really complained. We've implemented that. At the beginning, when we started this system, drivers complained. Some drivers complained. Uh, but now, people are happy. We think we can export uh, this business model. For instance, uh, tra traffic control signals, uh, U-bike systems, uh, we believe the new business model plus the technology will create many business opportunities to companies, uh, both here in the United States and in Taiwan. Now, uh, in Taiwan, uh, there are some debates whether the multilateral path or the regional one is the better approach to trade liberalization. Uh, when we joined WTO in uh, 2002, we hoped that the multilateral path would have achieved more by now. Uh, as an idealist, we should support the multinationalism, multilateralism. But being a realist, uh, we have also recognized that the bilateral path and negotiation of FTA can be a great supplement to WTO. Uh, we tested the bilateral model uh, by uh, signing uh, with two non-diplomatic allies, uh, which I just mentioned, Singapore and New Zealand. In these two exercises, uh, we proved that Taiwan is able to enter meaningful economic relations through FTAs with trading partners without causing any political difficulties to all parties concerned. Uh, also, uh, Taiwan's historical economic cooperation uh, framework agreement uh, signed with China in 2010 also shows that Taipei and Beijing can figure out a way to manage the bilateral relations. Uh, Taiwan also concluded a bilateral investment protection agreement with Japan which is quite, uh, we, we didn't really imagine we can do that with Japan, but we did it. Uh, on regional relations, of course, uh, go beyond uh, investment and trade. Uh, in recent uh, recent uh, 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 problem in South China Sea and East China Sea, Taiwan demonstrated to the world our determination to be a good neighbor. Uh, people to people exchange with ASEAN countries for education, training, and jobs shows that Taiwan is a very constructive force to the region's development. Uh, the students coming from Southeast Asia countries to Taiwan now is getting more and more. You, will, you, you see them, you see them around our campus. Uh, Taiwan has a relative small domestic market, which means that the growth of our economy must remain. Uh, reliant on foreign trade. If our export suffers, so does our economy. Over the past 20 years, Taiwan's trade dependency has reached a maximum of 140%. Uh, and uh, uh, Korea is 80%, Japan is 20 to 30%. Uh, however, both countries are successfully signing FTAs 
It is also instructive uh, that the share of our foreign trade covered by FTA is f it is 40% to uh, Korea, 20% to Japan, but only 10% to Taiwan. So our FTA coverage on FTA is very, is, is very low. Uh, in order to take full advantage of economic opportunities awarded to participating members by regional economic integration, as well as avoid the effects of being marginalized, Taiwan should push for inclusion in TPP, uh, which would lower cost of our exporters and increase our global uh, competitive uh, capabilities. Uh, now, uh, come to the, toward the end of uh, my speech. I think to Taiwan, trade liberalization is a path that we must take. It is not a choice, but it is, it is imperative. Uh, in 2014, Global Trade Facilitation Index released by the uh, World Economic Forum uh, last year, Taiwan was ranked 24th in the world. Our scores in category of border management, infrastructure constructions, and operation environment increase. However, in the category of market access, our ranking dropped 20 places to 121. In this category, we perform especially poorly in the subcategory of access to foreign markets, placing at 137 place. The reason for this is our exporters face an average tariff rate of around 10% additional. So there is no level playing field for our export, for our exporters, if these things cannot be changed. The conclusion that we can draw from this number is very clear. Taiwan must actively pursue free trade agreement with our trading partners, and we have to participate in TPP. Uh, of course, we understand this is not an easy path to take. Uh, we understand that the government must convince constituents at home that pushing for domestic reforms during the process of negotiating FTA is the proper path. We have to show that we are advocating such change, not only to satisfy our foreign uh, trading partners, but also to boost our own ability to compete on international level. Mm -hmm. We must show that pursuing trade liberalization through jointly bilateral or regional FTA will help secure Taiwan's long-term growth by attracting more foreign and domestic investment. Uh, Taiwan is the 19th largest economy in the world. We already have strong links with several members of TPP uh, through existing production supply chain. Over the past decades, our trade with Asian countries have doubled, mm -hmm. and Taiwan's technical know-how and investment in other countries has played a significant role in the uh, Asia-Pacific region's development. In 2013, Business Environment Risk Intelligence chose Taiwan as the third best country in the world to invest. In terms of practical uh, in terms of the uh, uh, practical business collaborations, Taiwan's industrial cluster development ranked number one in the world in the WEF's uh, World Competitiveness Report for the ninth consecutive year uh, and continue investment by leading U.S. companies stands as proof of the credibility that Taiwan's business environment is very good. One objective of regional in, uh, economic integration agreements such as TPP should be to improve the efficiency 
of existing supply chain. Taiwan, uh, as a major global trading partner, which is also actively engaged in uh, regional production arrangement and committed to a high standard of ongoing economic liberalization, should be fully a partner in bringing about uh, the Asia Pacific's closer uh, economic integ integration process. Uh, I think we have demonstrated our willingness to undertake high standards trade liberalization commitments in both of our FTAs with New Zealand and Singapore. We have, as I mentioned, 90, almost 99% of the items were liberalized in those two agreements. If we can do it there, we can do it with most of the many countries. Uh, meanwhile, we have also revised uh, our IPR-related laws and regulations on copyright, patent, trademark, and trade secret. Uh, this also uh, brings uh, Taiwan in, into lines with international practice. I think many investors, many uh, investors uh, from the United States, you ask them why they choose Taiwan to put their investment. One of the major reasons is our IPR protection and our res respect to the property rights and our legal system. Uh, more importantly, Taiwan is already reviewing and adjusting our domestic regulations to prepare for future regional integration. Uh, once the opportunity for our participation in TPP presents itself, Taiwan will be ready to integrate further with regional supply chain. We'll be able to attract more incoming investment and enhance our competitiveness through this liberalization uh, process. <coughs> we understand that current TPP members only accept exceeding members by consensus in the future. Once TPP reach agreement, we hope it can be done soon. Since the United States is undoubtedly uh, play a vital role in any such accession process, and given the long-standing friendship between our two countries, we uh, really and we sincerely hope that the U.S. will voice its strong support for Taiwan's membership in TPP. Uh, as many of you know, the United States and, and Taiwan enjoy strong uh, trade relations. I myself have the privilege of witnessing that in the past 30 years. Allow me to share a few of the data points out to illustrate the scope and the importance of our bilateral trade relations relationship. Uh, I'm sure that uh, many of the figures will not come as a surprise to you. Last year, Taiwan was among the uh, United States' top 10 trading partners, the U.S. replacing Japan as our second largest trading partners in 2014. Again, this to a career, uh, people working on trade areas for long, this is also uh, quite uh, uh, unimaginable. We replaced Japan, US replaced Japan as our second trading partners. Among foreign banks in Taiwan in 2014, US banks ranked first in the number of branches established. Uh, it's 21%. So you go to Taiwan, you see American banks. US banks from the United States are everywhere, and they have good business. Uh, trade aside, our, uh, the ties between people to people are also significant. Uh, uh, even under today, 47% of Taiwanese uh, students who study abroad uh, choose the United States as the destination for pursuing their higher education. Uh, trade and investment form a vastly important dimension of the broader United States-Taiwan relationship. An important channel for conducting our bilateral talks is the Trade and Investment Framework Agreement, uh, this TIFA. Trade talks between uh, US and Taiwan under TIFA uh, have been processing uh, smoothly in these two years. Uh, uh, last March was in Washington, D.C. We hope, uh, and uh, that in that meeting, 
we cover investment, IPR, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, agricultural, multilateral regional cooperation. So it covers many issues. Uh, we hope this year's TIFA can be held uh, soon uh, in Taipei. Uh, on this uh, uh, regional front, we are happy to see uh, there are 52 senators and 114 uh, House of Representatives have expressed their support for Taiwan's uh, participation in TPP. Uh, uh, once this process completed, uh, we hope it can be sooner. Uh, our nearly 300 billion import markets is up for American exporters, business community to, to grab. Uh, Taiwan and the U.S. has shared value in terms of governance and the institutions ever since the uh, 50s. And our participation, uh, TPP, is a step forward for U.S. pivot to Asia through these uh, trade initiatives. Uh, given the long-standing friendship between our two countries, we sincerely hope that uh, once TPP begin to accept accession of new members, the U.S. Uh, can support our efforts. The world economy today poses many challenges, especially for economies like Taiwan, that depends so heavily on uh, the uh, foreign markets. And uh, as I view it, with some of the particular hurdle uh, Taiwan faces in uh, securing our uh, economic future, I ask uh, our American friends to keep Taiwan very much within U.S. strategic blueprint. Washington's clear focus on maintaining and reinforcing our strong mutual and long-lasting ties is greatly needed and much appreciated. Thank you very much. <laughs> Minister Dung, thank you very much for an excellent talk and for joining us all at CSIS today. It's glad to have, we're very glad to have you here. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, uh, well, this is the Scott and Scott show, <laughs> and uh, we we uh, will, but we will, we're very kind. Uh, I can I can assure you. Uh, just a little bit on the the process. Uh, we've prepared several questions, um, and uh, but we have a, a, a very smart audience uh, of of terrific folks who who come to our events, and we want to give them a chance as well. So we're gonna. Uh, uh, ask a few questions on, on some topics that you raised in your, your, your remarks, uh, and then we'll throw it open to the audience. Um, we'll ask the audience members to do as we do, um, uh, identify uh, your name, your, your, where you're from, uh, and ask a question. Um, and uh, so we've got about 40 minutes or so, um, and so I think we can have a pretty, pretty good discussion. Um, you know, I first went to Taiwan in 1989 uh, when I was a student uh, at, at, at Taida, when I studied Chinese. Uh, and I must tell you, uh, the weather in Taipei was much better than the weather here. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but if you come back in the spring, uh, things will be much nicer. Um, but, you know, living in Taiwan then, uh, it, it did feel quite provincial. You know, I, I had great friends. I remember exactly the street I lived on, Rayanjie and just really uh, loved Taiwan. I, I went back 15 years later and the economy uh, and society had changed dramatically. And so Taiwan has continued to evolve uh, in, in many ways and, and adapt. Um, and the, the first question I wanted to ask is, is, is about Taiwan's famous small and medium-sized enterprises that you talked about in your, in your speech. Um, in many ways, everyone recognizes that small and medium enterprises are uh, the, a core of a country's economic strength. I come from a family of, of small business owners uh, myself. Um, but you also talked about the issues with branding and uh, you know, getting more global international recognition. And there are a few uh, companies from Taiwan that, that have such recognition, Acer among them. 
Um, do you think there might need to be some type of reconsideration of sort of the industrial structure in Taiwan to maybe give greater promotion to uh, larger companies and firms uh, to help Taiwan be more internationally competitive? The, okay, uh, Scott. The current combination, of course, uh, the number of large companies are much smaller compared, for instance, compared with Korea. Uh, there are large corporations uh, contribute a majority part of their GDP. Uh, ours, ours is this, this small medium. Do you, so if the question is, shall we change our, uh, this structure? I'll very hesitate to say yes, mm -hmm. to agree. I will be very hesitant. I think uh, this is our treasure. Uh, I think uh, uh, small medium uh, companies uh, is, a, uh, is a strong foundation uh, for the economy. Uh, they are very flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, any market change can very quickly reflect into their production process, into their marketing uh, method. So I, I wouldn't change. Okay. <laughs> and on the contrary, uh, all I'm doing in past two months is to encourage the small, medium enterprise. I have the privilege of visiting uh, companies in the countryside, southern middle part of Taiwan. And I deliberately choose small companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they need encouragement. Mm -hmm. I think they can do better. I think, uh, uh, I think we are blessing, blessed uh, to have them. Sure. Terrific. Terrific. Makes a lot of sense. Um, let me uh, turn to ask about uh, a topic that wasn't uh, a key point of your speech, but it was, was, was still relevant, and that's cross-strait economic ties. Um, as as, as uh, Mike Green mentioned, uh, there's about 67 billion in trade between the United States and Taiwan, but uh, cross-strait trade was about 120 billion last year, um, about two billion in investment from Taiwan in, in, in the mainland, um, about 5.4 million t visits from Taiwan to the mainland according to the statistics that we saw, and about four million Mainland visit, mainlander visits to Taiwan, so so very uh, in-depth relations, and and you know part of uh, Taiwan's uh, economic success story over the last few years is probably somewhat tied to the the, the growth of, of of the mainland as well, but also you know when the mainland catches a cold, Taiwan sneezes probably too, so it has its positives and minuses. Um, yeah, I know this has been a dis a topic of, of, of intense discussion in Taiwan is, you know, how dependent do you feel Taiwan is on the mainland economy and do you feel it's too dependent on the mainland economy? Yeah, you are right, Scott. And you, are, you have good me memory <laughs> of all those numbers. Look at this, 40% of our export mm -hmm. goes to China, mm -hmm. about 40%. That <clears throat> too heavily dependent on Chinese market. We have big debate in, in Taiwan on that. And somebody says 40%, 40% uh, with the uh, 1.3 billion population is growing. Their per capita now is moving above 6,000, 7,000. Uh, that's a growing market. Uh, so 40% is about, we've maintaining this 40% for some years. Uh, of course, you cannot deliberately control that number. Sure. What we can do is to cultivate the other markets <laughs> in order to balance that. Uh, I, I think as a Minister of Economic Affairs, I like to believe this 40% export markets uh, seems reasonable and we do not expose we, we do take an advantage of the growing market there, but we also maintain a reasonable balance vis-a-vis uh, -vis with the foreign, other foreign markets. Mm -hmm. Investment, 200 billions 
investment. Is that too much? Again, we cannot control. Uh, we, we have a reviewing process. Uh, when, uh, if we not, what we do now is we ask the potential, the applicants, if companies want to invest in China, we ask them, what's your plan in Taiwan? If, they, if their plan is to continue invest in Taiwan, they will continue to hire, uh, to hire uh, uh, employees in Taiwan. Then we will let the case go. And we check it. Uh, they cannot make empty commitments. We check it. Uh, so uh, over the years, uh, over the years, we think this practice is OK where they can, again, take advantage of the growing market there, but also create opportunities for our own. So that's, as the tourist, that's fine. Uh, we, we enjoy the money they bring in. Uh, they do create jobs. Uh, the tourists do create jobs for bus drivers, for the restaurants, uh, so on and so forth. So overall, overall, it's not too much rely upon China or not. It, overall, I think it is our capability to further strengthen our relations with foreign countries, with mm -hmm. other foreign countries. Sure. sure. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got one more, and then I'm going to pass the baton. Um, and much of what you say actually resonates uh, with how Americans are looking at our own economy and our, our need to upgrade. Uh, the challenges we have between promoting uh, investment abroad as, as well as developing ma manufacturing here. Um, but also, uh, I wonder, you know, and you, you've you lived in Washington before, so you, you know that uh, this is a very political town, uh, and politics is a very, has a huge effect on American economic policy, of, of course. And so I, I was, you know, and you, you laid out, um, a very clear list of policy priorities and, and uh, directions that the Taiwan uh, uh, that Taiwan needs to take. To what extent, uh, you know, putting on your your sort of political analyst hat, you know, how do domestic politics in Taiwan affect the ability to make these types of changes? We notice, you know, uh, you know, there's an election upcoming, and party politics in Taiwan are, can be pretty fierce. Uh, last spring, uh, the students uh, decided to uh, uh, do much more than American students usually do and <laughs> entered the uh, legislative UN without invitation. Um, so, so it's a pretty complex, you know, politically. So, a lot of ch so from a sort of just looking at Taiwan's politics, um, how big a challenge is that in, in adopting the type of, I know you already mentioned all the things that you have to do uh, in your position as minister. Uh, but from you know, strategically, how do you how do you overcome all of those challenges? Uh, I hope uh, politics is everywhere in That's every true. area. Uh, economics, economic issues cannot escape sure. from this politics as well. I, I, I understand that, but I do hope uh, that uh, uh, on the this politics, uh, when they come to economic issues, hopefully uh, the society have a stronger uh, consensus that this is our life blood. We shouldn't destroy the, the achievement we have so far. This is the most important part to continue to defend our system our way of life. Can we work? Can we achieve that? Uh, I, think, I think we can do it. But through longer process, through more efforts, through more inter uh, explanation, through more uh, and willing to make a compromise. Uh, I was uh, the first thing I achieved as a minister, and this is a very domestic issue. This is a very domestic issue. Uh, we have, a, uh, in my presentation, uh, I, I put this 
the company called Taiwan Power Company, the monopoly. They they supply all the ele electricity for mm -hmm. Taiwan. It's good companies. I mean, we we built up from scratch, uh, and now everybody has everywhere, every corner, high mountains, everywhere has is the electricity. It is their contribution. But now politicians always, uh, always use them, utilize them mm -hmm. uh, as their political tool. To be, very, to be very specific, in every election, they will say, you cannot raise the electricity bill. But when the fuel, everything, uh, the price is going up, how can you ask them not to adjust their beer? But they did. In the past years, they did so. So the debt accumulation of that company is always, all, almost, almost, it's all, almost is the same as their capital assets. It's terrible. You want that company being broken? You want shortage of electricity supply? Politicians, they don't care. Uh, I think this is terrible. We shouldn't. They, 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 they do not have the ability, enough capitals, to make further investment. In 20 years or in certain years, we may, uh, the, all the equipments will be too outdated. But the uh, uh, first thing I noticed, and then as a minister, I, I was quite happy I, I was able to establish a formula where as we guarantee that they can have certain margin of small though, but small, but uh, profit, where they can save it to make further investment and also help the morale of the engineers working in that company. So it is achievable. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is difficult, it is achievable. I can tell you, uh, it, uh, it created a lot of anxieties. Uh, and then you work long hours, you are on call uh, of the legislators. Anyone, if they have any questions about this company, you go, just go. Day and night, early morning, late mm -hmm. evenings. So I think the society, Gradually, we, we are learning how to push the agenda which is right through these uh, political uh, difficulties. Terrific. Thank you so, so much for discussing those topics. I'm going to turn the floor over now yes. to Scott. He's going to talk about okay. some other issues. Great. Thank, thank you again for your, for your uh, presentation this morning. We're very much uh, uh, enjoyed the, your remarks and learned from them. I'd like to start with, the, with uh, noting that you commented on the growth of Taiwan's trade with the rest of Asia. <clears throat> and Taiwan is clearly becoming a very deeply integrated in the production chains, the production networks of Asia, which is excellent for your economy. And I would note that probably the sector most, the, where you've been the most successful is in electronics. Uh, Taiwan at this point partly built on the information technology agreement, which created essentially free trade in the sector. Uh, uh, Taiwan has moved up the value chain very dramatically in electronics and now has world-class companies uh, that, uh, that, that are, are core to the, uh, to the performance of electronic products, but also there's a, there's a degree of sophistication of Taiwan's contribution to, uh, to the uh, value chains in, in electronics. I mean, when, when an American asked me why we should care about trade with Taiwan, my first response is, because your mobile phone won't work if you don't have Taiwan. <laughs> right? So, uh, so it, it's a very impressive story, and it, it's happened very recently, so it's, it's something to celebrate. My question is, what other sectors could Taiwan reasonably expect to replicate the success that you've had in electronics? And why? It's not uh, that easy. True. We tried several years ago once to develop biotechnology. Mm -hmm. We have some success, but basically, it's not as good as we hope. Yeah. Uh, 
I think now uh, what we are doing is we think we can combine our ICT foundation mm -hmm. and uh, the cultural mm -hmm. side yes. and uh, then field in whatever mm -hmm. sectors can be medical care, right. mm -hmm. uh, can be uh, auto parts, mm -hmm. combine this ICT and cultural part. Uh, many of the uh, many of our business leaders were advocating uh, Taiwan can be can have uh, large business opportunities for the overseas Chinese communities, mm -hmm. just large, good point. which will have good reception. Mm -hmm. If we can practice that, mm -hmm. if we can have test in Taiwan that mm -hmm. can be successful. We can export mm -hmm. uh, that business model. That's our hope. Uh, it might be any sectors. Sure. That's very encouraging. Thank you. Uh, let me ask another question from your remarks. You, you did mention that Taiwan is committed to the multilateral trading system and multilateral liberalization, as well as bilateral uh, negotiations and free trade agreements. Uh, there's a third leg to that stool, which is uh, unilateral or autonomous liberalization, uh, mainly done through things like free trade zones. I know that Taiwan has recently established free trade zones as an economic strategy. Can you tell us how that's working? OK. Um, for instance, uh, I don't know how many lawyers. I was told there are many lawyers <laughs> in any gathering in Washington, We can find some for you. <laughs> <laughs> Put out an APB. Yes. <laughs> for instance, the legal service sector, uh, if, uh, if we uh, tell our uh, lawyers we want to further open up American lawyers to practice in Taiwan, mm -hmm. the answer is no. Why? Why we have to open up our markets to American lawyers further? They can, they can do some business here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they ha we put limitation on them, but uh, uh, they can do business. So that's the argument. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we said business community wants them mm -hmm. to come in. We don't want to say U.S. government wants them to come in. But business community want, want, wants their service. I mean, there are so many agreements. Which very large size needs a very sophisticated legal skills, which you cannot provide. Uh, so, but always, you know, lawyers, they argue. Uh, they argue back. So the idea now is to have this uh, special zone concept idea. We open up limited market, mm -hmm. fully open for them, mm -hmm. for the foreign legal service. Same thing, same principle apply to architects. Same apply to everything that uh, you have foreign, you have uh, resistance of the domestic uh, suppliers, then let's open it up in a certain part, ports, port area, airport area, and then peop then let the user enjoy the benefits. Mm -hmm. One day, voluntarily or involuntarily, this can apply to whole country. Mm -hmm. That is the concept. Right. Very good, thank you. Let me ask one, one more question, and it's where you concluded your remarks. You mentioned and reiterated to this audience uh, Taiwan's interest in becoming a Trans-Pacific Partnership member. And uh, uh, many of us in Washington have encouraged Taiwan in, in pursuit of this goal. Uh, part of the judgment that will, will likely take place, or certainly has taken place with other uh, economies which have become part, parties to the negotiation uh, is a question of readiness. And uh, I believe that, that uh, your government has been going through the process of sort of looking carefully at similar agreements, say the U.S.-Korea Free Trade Agreement and others, to, uh, to get an assessment, internal assessment, of, of your, your readiness that would then become part of the decision, part of the, the information that the, the, ex the existing parties would review in order to, to make a judgment on Taiwan's readiness to accede. Uh, could you tell us how that's going and what you're learning about that uh, review 
of sort of both readiness to, uh, for the domestic market reforms and readiness to engage outwardly? Uh, yes, the, I think the experience we learned from that exercise mm -hmm. uh, so far is uh, unless you can help them increase their competitiveness, they will resist. The domestic interest will resist. Mm -hmm. And then, unless you can uh, assure them that once they get in trouble, you will help them, mm -hmm. and you have enough money prepared yeah. to go through that process, mm -hmm. then they will resist. So uh, one way for us to, uh, to prepare for that is increase, one is to increase their competitiveness. We can do that. We still have. Sure. Uh, we've been doing that for some time. Uh, the, the best example is this uh, uh, stock <laughs> uh, uh, industry, which is very small, very weak, uh, mm -hmm. very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But now they are very confident. Uh, they are very confident that they can face the competition once we open up. So there are some good stories. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, agriculture is a... Is a is a area we need to really pay attention to uh, agriculture because of its natural conditions. Uh, our agricultural sector is not that uh, competitive. In terms of the staple uh, grain products, they are good in flowers, in vegetables. They are very very good. Probably we have to move gradually move uh, from the staple from large scale grain. Uh, production into that area. Uh, the the process need to be uh, need to be faster, quicker. Uh, but uh, that's what we are doing. But you always feel that not not uh, fast enough. Uh, so that's okay. yeah. Thank you, Scott. You want to sure. check with the audience? Uh, of, of course, most definitely. Um, we've got plenty of time for the audience to ask questions. And so what we'll do is uh, I'll moderate and select. Just please identify who you are, the organization you're with, and ask a question. Um, so not no speeches, but questions. And uh, so we'll start right in the middle here. I, I know him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> John Zan with CTI TV Zhongtian. Um, Mr. Minister, uh, uh, it's good to see you um, uh, back in Washington, D.C. It seems every time we see you get a new promotion. In that sense, we want to see you more. Um, my question is, uh, while on your uh, very first visit to the United States in your new capacity, are you going to tackle any of the most sensitive uh, uh, trade issues in uh, U.S.-Taiwan trade, like uh, uh, pork or beef, you know, that's the issue that stands in the way um, in the growth of U.S.-Taiwan economic trade. Thank you. <laughs> I, I know you always bring up very difficult, <laughs> uh, very difficult questions. There are, I think, uh, it, it, between two countries, I mean, we have 700, uh, 70 billion uh, trade. Certainly, uh, certain issues are difficult for both sides to, to deal with. Uh, pork is one of these very good examples. Uh, I think we have to uh, deal with those issues anyway, but timing is important. Whether this is a good time to deal with that uh, issue, I. Uh, I think we both governments need to have uh, wisdom to handle that. Y you push an issue in the wrong time, cannot succeed. Uh, but you push that in the right time, uh, maybe the chance of success increase. Uh, on the pork issue, uh, considering all the factors, in Taiwan, uh, I'll say the timing might not be that ripe. Uh, 
uh, to deal with now. Uh, but I understand this is a thing, this is a product that US government and the US export, exporting communities uh, are very concerned of. We certainly understand that. But uh, I think we may have, uh, have to deal with that in the later stage. Can I come right here? Yes, uh, in the second round. I know he. <laughs> uh, Garrett Van Der Wees, editor of Taiwan Communique. John, welcome back to uh, DC. It's great to see you here. Um, Scott already mentioned the issue of uh, cross-trade uh, relations and over-dependence on China, and I think Hillary Clinton even mentioned that last summer. There's one other aspect to that, and that is that uh, in the view of many people in Taiwan, the rapprochement with China and the economic relations have basically only benefited the large conglomerates and not trickled down enough. Uh, you have students in Taiwan who have an excellent education but cannot find a job. Um, so my question to you is what do you see as the best f way forward to that so there is more of an even distribution in society of the benefits? Uh, yes, uh, Gary, uh, you... It, there is... Uh, uh, because of that... Uh, uh, that uh, impression, we check the uh, number of our export to, uh, to China. Uh, you are right that showing all the statistics that only large, company, large companies uh, can uh, knows how to, to deal with that large system. So on the on check with every shipments. Many of them were shipped by large corporations. Uh, we then interview, we then interview the different association, industrial associations. Uh, the number we compile is this. About 50% of our exports are coming from S and small and medium companies, about 50%. And 50% were exported by uh, large companies. And then you go to talk to the, those uh, exporters, large uh, companies, say where you get your components, uh, and uh, where, where you get materials, where you get components. The answer is very clear. I have, I, in my presentation, I mentioned about this cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, it is provided, their components were supplied by their neighboring cluster satellite companies, uh, which are small, basically. So, uh, so while the number seems like 50% uh, were uh, benefited uh, by the large companies, but in reality, small companies are also benefited from this process by supplying them the parts, components, and doing the service for them. Uh, now, uh, another thing, of course, is the, uh, the a youth, the un unemployment rate and low wage of the youth group. Uh, the unemployment rate, according to the statistics, for the youth group is about 11%, uh, which is high, because the overall unemployment rate is only 4%, less than 4%. Uh, what can we do? Uh, I mean, to a certain degree, for young people with strong motivation, uh, we have to help them uh, to find a job. The problem now is when they finish their school, they do not possess the skill that the company wants. So we have to help the education side. 
we put a lot of money to help the schools to buy machineries, to hire new teachers, experienced teachers. And then we ask the companies not to adopt, to cooperate with the schools to bring the students earlier, in earlier stage, into the factories. Those are the efforts we are making. We hope we can produce some result. It, there are some results. It cannot resolve all the problems. Uh, but we think it is important because otherwise, if we do not take good care of those young people who cannot find job or with very low wage, this is a group in the society where they are the source of uh, this uh, sunflower <laughs> Uh, movement. Yeah, so it is an important issue. I, uh, sure, thank you. Go right here in front. Zhao Yingfeng from World Journal. Um, my question is about China, uh, mainland China's investment in Taiwan. So, according to the statistic released by your ministry, um, in 2014, the investment from mainland China to Taiwan uh, dropped by 4%. And it's even lower than the one in 2012. Uh, I wonder, in your opinion, is it all due to the slowing down of the Chinese economy, or is there something we can do on the Taiwanese side? My second question is about the cabinet. So Mr. Jin Pusong resigned last week, and uh, today in Taipei, uh, Mr. Wang Yuqi also resigned. And some people comment that uh, people are abandoning this broken ship. What do you think about the turmoil in the cabinet? Thank you. Your, your first question is already difficult enough. <laughs> the second question becomes uh, uh, unanswerable <laughs> to me. <laughs> uh, that's the, the uh, easy questions first. Uh, yeah, we uh, uh, the uh, investment regime for the Chinese investment to Taiwan was not, has not been relaxed in the past two years. Uh, in the original plan, we hope we can relax their investment step by step. Scott mentioned, we have 200 billion investment in China, mm -hmm. but we have less than uh, 1 billion investment from China to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. This is unbalanced. This is unbalanced. Uh, and uh, because we have uh, many restrictions, we hope that by the effective, by, by, by the uh, uh, service agreement being effective, we, because in service agreement, we open up uh, more sectors for Chinese investment. But that one, of course, stored in legislature. Uh, that's why you see the drop of the Chinese investment to Taiwan. Is that a concern? Uh, yeah, I mentioned in my, uh, in my uh, uh, presentation that slowdown in China, uh, of course, will affect everyone. Uh, certainly will affect Taiwan. Uh, investment from China, do they create jobs? Of course, they create jobs. Unlike uh, the previous saying by some, some people uh, that they will bring in many Chinese to work in Taiwan, it doesn't happen. Uh, they, have, they have the right to import some managerial positions, but most of the employees working for their investment are Taiwanese. So they create jobs. Uh, for Taiwan. Uh, is that a concern? We hope that uh, everything, if everything can move smoothly, uh, I think there are some opportunities for their investment, but it is because of the service agreement, uh, uh, the stagnant, the stall of the service agreement in that stage, so that uh, uh, the, uh, the attraction of Chinese investment to Taiwan is, is become uh, less. Uh, do, do I want to, to see it changed? Yes, they create jobs. Uh, and uh, 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 so whoever, whatever, whoever 
can create jobs is a positive force in our society. Uh, second question, I don't know. It happened. No? <laughs> it all happened after I left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> You're already wearing enough hats, so make sure you don't get any more. Okay. We have a question right up here in front, and then I'm going to go toward the back for the next one. <laughs> Andre Sobazil, I'm a um, uh, partner and director for um, Vietnam, Southeast Asia, and Washington, D.C. for the Interstate Traveler Company in Detroit. Now, my question is what an edifying conversation. You know, my question is this on TPP. Um, other than, well, combined with the obstacles you see internally in Taiwan to preparing for entrance into PPP, uh, what do you believe are the chief obstacles outside of Taiwan? Uh, President Obama has problems with his political base, uh, Japan has protectionist issues, and on and on. What do you see as your analysis? Uh, this is the first experience that I ever have in my 30 years service in this area. Well, the TPP can the information of TPP can be kept so secret, uh, not released to the outside world, or uh, generally speaking, in a multilateral negotiation. Some people will leak or tell us what happened in that negotiation. But TTP, TPP is an exception. We have so much trouble to get to know what happened there, uh, and we get different information from different sources. So a lot of myths there. <laughs> but uh, uh, as to, therefore, I, I don't really, I mean, you, of course, we, believe me, we put a lot of emphasis. We, we, we spend a lot of resources on following what happened in TPP negotiations. But you are right. Uh, Japan has some chat difficulties on their agricultural products. Our Japanese friend uh, uh, told us what happening in that area. That give us uh, some, uh, some thought for us mm -hmm. to, to be ready, uh, to prepare ourselves. Uh, but I think uh, uh, all the inf information lead us to believe uh, TPP uh, probably they are in the process of real engagement. So it might come uh, soon, uh, and we hope so. Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Titi Lyle Ogundele. I'm a recent graduate from Syracuse University. It's got my master's in international relations. I actually used to live in Taiwan. I just came back from Christmas, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my question is, as um, you, Scott had pointed out about um, you know, U.S. Um, not U.S. Uh, China and Taiwan cross rate relations, and how economic ties are becoming more and more integrated. Is there a fear in Taiwan about um, the economic ties being so close that it could, you know, kind of cross wires with political ties? And is there a fear of being like reabsorbed into China in terms of reunification? Thank you. If we see what happened in this. Uh uh, sunflower thing. I think the fear is there in younger, in young generations. Uh, it's it's depend upon. Uh, I th I think if you ask me how I think it, I think we are strong enough. Uh, we are strong enough for not uh, to be able to continue uh, to defend uh, the, our system. I think we have American support. We share the same core value here. Uh, if we continue uh, to move forward, not to go back, backward uh, on maintaining those core values, freedom, democracy. Uh, and then uh, what I'm talking about today is to keep our economy strong. Uh, we, we should be uh, comfortable that uh, uh, we, can, we can achieve uh, we can achieve that, not being absorbed uh, by China. Sure. 
Um, we have time for just one more question, and then uh, if, you, if you, I don't call on you now, you can just come up to the stage afterward uh, for a few minutes. But uh, the, the woman in the purple blue dress. Purple's my favorite color. <laughs> yeah, I'm Miss Purple now. Uh, Iris Shaw of Taiwan's Democratic Progressive Party. Minister, thank you for mentioning about the importance of reaching social consensus, especially during the trade negotiation. Uh, our social society has paid some price during uh, the beef issue and the TISA issue. Uh, so uh, we believe you're in a great position of reaching across the aisle because you and Dr. Tsai has worked together well uh, since the day in the Mainland Affairs Council. Having said that, um, DPP has just established a TPP uh, tax force. So my question is, is there uh, any uh, mechanism in place uh, to ensure a sufficient and meaningful uh, consultations with different political parties and uh, business communities and all the parties concerned, including NGOs. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Uh, as I said, the communication uh, with the society, with uh, uh, different uh, group of interests are very important. We, we, we could make it in our WTO accession process uh, the government has very open uh, uh, channel to, dial to, to dialogue with different parties. Uh, currently on TPP, I understand uh, TPP has uh, established a mechanism and they discuss TPP issues uh, in the think tank for quite some time. Uh, uh, certainly, I'm willing and we are committed uh, to talk to, to them. Uh, there are some initial contact uh, already uh, met. Uh, we will do that, and I think this is important. We need to let the society uh, to know what happening in this TPP, how we are preparing uh, for that, uh, uh, in, in, to achieve that goal. Uh, and I think there are some very good person in, in DPP uh, who are focusing, spend efforts on that. So uh, next time when we see each other, uh, I'll have more positive things to report. Hopefully by that time, the mechanism has already been established. Well, you've only been in your job two months, uh, but you're already uh, feel like a veteran in listening to your remarks and your engagement with the audience. Uh, and uh, the, your presentation and the discussion was very informative. I think we all learned uh, quite a bit, and we appreciate you taking the time to be with us today, and we wish you the best of luck with the rest of your trip. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Scott.